Really quick before we start this week's video, we want to say thank you. We're in Alaska. This is a bucket list destination that we didn't know if we were going to make it. Yeah, we've been trying for six <laughs> years to come up here. We want to say thank you to all our subscribers who have made this channel, who have brought us this far. We want to say thank you to our patrons who keep the wheels turning and keep us on the road. We want to say thank you to Steve who made these bucket list ha items happen. So it, without you, we would have never even tried them. Yeah. We are feeling such a sense of gratitude of being here and getting to do these things that thank you doesn't seem like it covers it, but yeah, yeah. thank you. If you asked me 10 years ago, if I thought we were ever going to do anything like this, I would have said no way. So it's just been great. All the different people that we've got to meet along the way and the memories that we get to make and have for the rest of our lives. So just the giant from our hearts, thank you. Yes, thank you. Alaska and it is hard to get the cameras rolling without the noise of an airplane in the background because there is a lot of air traffic and a lot of places to visit and this campground here I, I believe it's called Mariner Park campground but it has a kiosk where you a pay station where you pay at and then it's pretty much a big parking lot but stay tuned to the end of the video we'll tell you all the details that you're going to want to know if you want to come out to Homer and camp because it gets very busy out here in the summer. So we have lots of plans, uh, places to go, things to do. We are super excited about sharing this video with you and having a great time as this is one of our main destinations in Alaska, at least from the start. And this is where we're kicking off a lot of the fun. Here's our little camp spot here. It's not completely full yet. But every night this campground's been filling up just like all the other ones. This area is amazing. And this is beachfront property and the tide is way out so you can see the mud flats. With big mountains in the backgrounds, glaciers. And this is the halibut capital of the world. And that's what the sign says when you come into town. What are you doing today? I'm getting ready to go fishing. So I've never gone halibut fishing in my whole life and I finally have the opportunity to go. I'm super excited. A big shout out and thank you to one of our patrons, Steve, for sponsoring this trip. This is gonna be memories that I never forget and just about to ship off right now. We're taking a 50 foot boat out, seven hour tour. I'm, I'm super excited. It's a good thing we got a freezer. Thanks to George and Sana. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to put some fish in that freezer. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you filming today? I'm not going to be filming today just because hopefully I'll have my hands full reeling in fish. It looks like it's it might be a rough day. It's a, like a seven and a half hour tour. The wind was blowing hard yesterday, so I'm expecting some swells. I'm just going to go out there and enjoy it on my own this one. 
Here's some ibuprofen and Dramamine just in case. And that I might need. <laughs> Dave is a very good fisherman. I have seen very few people outfish Dave, but since we've been on the road, he hasn't done a lot of fishing, mainly because we just can't afford a fishing license in every state. So the fact that he gets to do um, one of his dream fishing trips, thank you, Steve. I'm so happy for him. I told him, just go fish. Don't worry about filming it. Just enjoy it. I hope he catches his limit, which I think is two fish, and I hope they're not too big or too small. Just right. Just enough to fit in the freezer. It was super fun. I saw pictures, you caught two fish? I caught two halibut, three rockfish, and one Pacific cod. And you only keep the hal halibut? I kept all of them. You kept all of yeah, them? Yeah. Oh boy. So you're probably one of the best fishing charters I've ever been on. I mean, it was a long way there and back, but you didn't have to wait very long and you were catching fish. So the halibuts are small, they're not giant. Nobody caught a big one, but everybody caught two halibut. Cool. Oh, I was really happy. <laughs> you looked all smiles in the pictures you sent. Yep. It was worth it? It was worth it. Best, best fishing trip ever? I, I think it is. Yep. And so now the fish has to get processed and we'll pick it up tomorrow. They're going to bag it and freeze it. And it'd be ready to go. Awesome. <clears throat> are they hard to reel in? Oh, my arms were like noodles after just a couple of fish because there was three pound weights. So even if you didn't catch nothing and you're reeling in, it would kick your butt. <laughs> so by the last one, I could have kept fishing for a bigger one, but my arms were so tired. I'm like, I'll keep it. <laughs> it looked like a good day. You didn't get sick? No, I didn't get sick. Um, several people did get sick. Oh, good yeah. thing you had the patch on. Yeah. Was it rough? Yeah. Um, not super bad, maybe four to six, I mean, occasional eight foot swell, but uh, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but enough to make people sick. What you got? There's the box of fish. So that's black rockfish and cod and halibut. So if we see you on the road, we'll cook you some fish. We're having fish tacos minimum. Fish tacos? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so 
lot of fish, Dave. We're gonna be eating fish. <laughs> we don't have to buy meat for a while. That's a lot of fish. We can well, put... you got enough. Perfect amount for the freezer. Today we're at the farmer's market here in Homer and it's open two days a week starting at uh, 10 to 3 on Saturday and 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Wednesdays. So we're going to go take a look at it. This is on the way to the spit and it's very well known, very popular, runs all summer. Let's go take a peek. I, th <laughs> I think this is what's drawing most of the people here are the fresh because vegetables which are just incredibly healthy looking and they're going fast. This is right at opening right now and people have full baskets. Just beautiful looking vegetables. This is a booth of birch syrup. So if you've ever had maple syrup and you like that, this might be something to try. It is expensive and that's because it takes a lot more gallons of sap to make the syrup than it does the maple syrup. So Darren ended up buying some of that. I can't, I look forward to getting a taste. Pure birch syrup. Look how many people are here. You can tell this is popular. There's everything from baked goods to ice cream, fruits and vegetables to crafts. And there's lots of rhubarb. If you come to Alaska, you'll find lots of rhubarb. And that's why I thought this might be the place to go to get some rhubarb jam. And sure enough, I was able to find some. So any of the booths that have the fresh vegetables are just getting hammered right now. People are buying it up. And this one here has what I'm excited about. The rhubarb jam, it's pure rhubarb. It's not mixed with any strawberries or anything else. And I noticed that's hard to find. Thanks guys. Thank you. I'm definitely getting one of those. All right, so I found a dude that just sharpens knives and stuff, and I asked him if he sharpens axes, and he says he does. So I think I'm gonna take it up on him on that. I've been sharpening my own hatchet and axe for the last six years, and I'm just okay at it. I can, I can keep it sharp enough to use, but I think I'm starting to lose the edge, and I need to start from, from square one. All right, so he worked on them both, and he said they weren't bad but he grinded a long time, so I think he was being nice. But they finally have a professional edge, so I'll be able to keep up on them a lot better than I was. Can't wait to try them out. All right, I apologize ahead of time for the noise in the background. This area of town is very busy. So we are right across the street from where they have the farmer's market in the summertime, and this is the washboard laundromat. And Carrie already has been over here and said it was the best shower that she has ever had and the reviews on the laundromat itself are some of the highest I've ever seen so I did want to go in and check it out. Now this place is extremely busy. Um, I don't want to invade anybody's privacy so I'm going to go in there. I'm not going to talk a lot and just film some of the basic stuff and see what's going on inside here. We have seen a lot of laundromats and a lot of showers over the years. So we are getting a tour of the laundry facilities, which is super cool. All the beautiful artwork here too. I did. Is that local? Me. You did it? Oh yeah. Amazing. I'll have to, I'm gonna take a closer look. What's your name? My name is Tori. Tori, nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Dave. So it's almost just like home. Oh, it is super clean. Yeah. She says the water was very hot, good pressure. And uh, she was super impressed. And a lot of places don't have anywhere to sit down. They don't have any hooks to hang your clothes on. So well, the boss redid every single one of these. When they bought the place, it was a little run down, and they've redone the showers, the washers, the floor, well, the solar it, panels. It, I mean, oh, you got solar panels too? Oh, yeah. Awesome. 
Yeah, utilities here are pretty crazy, so anything that That's helps. a lot. These are all showers? Yes, they are. Wow. We have two family showers here that are larger, the two heads for yeah. when you throw a whole bunch of people into one shower. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. You betcha. Thank you for showing me around. So super awesome clean liner mat, biggest folding table I've ever seen. All the machines look like they're running, no out of order. They're clean, they're new. I have to admit, this has got to be on the top of the list for the laundry mats that I've ever seen. All right, back on the road. We have arrived at Alaska Bear Adventures, and this is going to be where Carrie and Steve take off. Not the helicopter, but they're checking in right now. They've got to get weighed. Their camera gear or bags that they take with them also get weighed. So hopefully that's going to work out okay, because Carrie wanted to take all of her cameras, and she had to settle. What are you guys waiting for? I think we're waiting for the pilot to come and a little briefing. Oh, where'd, where'd your bag go? The bag goes inside. Was it too heavy? Did you weigh it? Um, it was 13 pounds. I was allowed 10 pounds, but she let it go. Really? Yeah. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I've seen some people putting on bug spray before and then throwing their bug spray back in their car. Like yeah, because you can't take anything pressurized. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. This Excellent. Yeah, good. Excited to go to Brooks. Yes. Yeah, good. All right. Well, like I said, my name's Josh. I'll be taking you guys over there this morning. You ordered extra bears for us? Yeah, we'll try. We always try. <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about being cold on the plane. You might when we get up high. Too many people in here. <clears throat> Where are your ears, Steve? before this trip, but seeing it from the air brings a whole new appreciation for Alaska beauty. It is said that 80 to 90 percent of Alaska still remains untouched and unexplored. It really is the last frontier. density of brown bears in the country, the largest protected population of brown bears in the world. By protected, I mean uh, they can't be hunted, trapped, uh, or anything of that nature, so they are safe to roam freely in their natural environment. And we graduated bear school. We did. We went to bear school. And we got a bear pin. Now we just need to buy some, find some bears. The bear is coming down the trail. Hey, bear. We're not in your way.
Not anywhere. We have bears. That was awesome. She was checking us out. We have arrived at Brooks Falls. They only allow so many people on the platform at a time. Our name is on the list. So we're gonna go to a staging area called the Riffles while we wait for our turn. Oh, I see a bear. Two bears. I watched this young mother bear and her cub for about 45 minutes. And her fishing skills, well, they needed some work. Every time she dove into the water, I held my breath with anticipation. And every time she emerged without a fish. I started to feel bad for her, but wouldn't you know it, as soon as I stopped recording, she caught her first fish, and then her second. And her third. And her fourth and fifth. I think she finally figured it out. And when it was our turn to move up to the Brooks Falls platform, guess who came along? Yep, Mama Bear and Baby Bear. And it didn't take her long before she caught her next fish. And before we knew it, our time was up. It was time to catch our flight home. What an amazing experience.
right, there it is. They're safely on the water. They're gonna take a shuttle bus back to where we're at. It was good. It was good, it was awesome. Lots and lots of bears. Lots get, of bears, the bears. Did you get to fly the plane? I got to fly the plane. You did? No. Oh, he did. I was, I was the a co pilot. Uh, that's cool that you got to sit up front, though. Lots yeah. of the bears. Lots of the bears. bears. The bears. Lots of bears eating fish. Lots yeah. of bears eating fish. Uh, Mama and baby crashed right in front of us on the trail, like eight feet. Whoa. Ten feet? Yeah, they so, were very close. Every bear I, was a grizzly? I think so. Do you think that was a mama? Uh huh. Yeah. They were both two bruisers to be <laughs> They were all grizzly bears, right? They were grizzly bears. It's 10 o'clock at night. It's absolutely, insanely beautiful. It's one of those times where you're just happy. You put your shoes on and you got your butt out the door. It's just incredible. much to talk about what we love about this little city but first if you want to come here tell them what they need to know all right so if you want to stay at the mariner park campground like we did it is first come first serve uh, they have a kiosk where you'll fill out the information and pay with the credit card and it is thirty dollars a night and it could be full because this is a super popular destination yes there are uh uh, pit toilets, there's a picnic table, there's a dumpster, and some fire pits, but you're right on the beach, so it's a beautiful location. It, like Dave said, it's first come, first serve, and check-in time is uh, 2, PM. 2 p.m. Any size rig can get in here. Uh, the parking lot is a little bit rough, but anybody can make it in any size. Um, just like I said, it, it could be full, because it is first come, first serve, depending on the time. Definitely don't come in on a holiday weekend and expect to get a spot because it will yes. be full. If you're coming in on a holiday weekend, you're going to want to book ahead of time at one of the RV parks further on down the spit. And that's what I wanted to mention is the boondocking, there is no boondocking here in Homer. Just like Valdez, there's no boondocking. So you will need to get a campground. This one starts at 30. They go all the way up to $75, maybe even more. There are lots maybe four or five campgrounds along the spit. It's probably a good idea to get a reservation yeah. if you're on a busy weekend. Um, but we just love the area. So if you come to this one like we did, there is a trail that goes along the spit. It's four miles long. It's a beautiful little route. You can walk it or you can take a bike. It's got flowers on the sides, ocean views, old boats to look at. Uh, Mountains in and, the distance. Yeah. Now, Rudel absolutely loves it here. Um, the dogs are allowed off leash on the beach and he is just having a great time. I believe you can have fires here on the beach as well. And that's pretty unique because most places are not like that. Now, if you, why would you want to come to Homer? We have had the absolute best time. According to Homer, it's the fishing, the halibut fishing capital of the world. So if you're into fishing, you'll want to come to Homer. Yeah, so you can take a charter boat out or if you want to bring your own rod and reel, there's a place to fish at the end of the spit. Uh, there's also a place to rent fishing poles for about 30 bucks a day. And then you can just walk to the end and go fishing. Well, if you have a license. Yes. 
Now, a lot of float planes fly out of Homer and they go to di various different destinations. <clears throat> I was gifted a trip to Katmai National Park, which was phenomenal. And it was a two hour flight there and we were four hours on the ground. If you have a chance to do that, save your pennies and, and do it. It's worth every penny. Yeah, and I was also gifted a fishing trip, a halibut fishing trip, which was on my bucket list. So we got two basically bucket list idea, uh, items yes. checked off the yeah. list. I had a great time. It was the best charter I've ever been on. For the first time ever, I caught halibut. Uh, big shout out to Steve. Thank you for these memories that we'll have forever. Yes. And uh, all along this bit, there are lots of little gift shops, plenty of restaurants for you to eat at. So you'll want to make this a destination location, <clears throat> make it a special event. Know you're going to spend a little bit more money here, um, but it is worth it. The town of Homer itself is a small town of 2,700 people. We found it to be very friendly and we went to the 4th of July parade. It reminded me of the parades that we used to go to in our hometown. Yes. So it was, people were super kind. It was fun. Um, I highly recommend this area. Yeah, absolutely. There are a lot of hiking trails. You can take water taxis across the bay and do hikes into the mountains. Your possibilities here are endless. The views are amazing. And something you may not know if you haven't been to Alaska is if you're in the interior of Alaska in the summer, it can be hot, like almost unbearably hot. So if you're looking for a place to cool off and stay away from the bugs, get on the coast like here and <laughs> it is perfect. Yeah, actually this is the first day we've had sun. And you will hear that sound a lot because the float planes are everywhere and they take off all the time. So again, we hope you enjoyed this video as much as we have enjoyed being here. This has literally been a dream come true. Yeah, I feel like we could talk about this area for another half an hour. I mean, there's just so much to do and there's so much fun to be had. Yeah. It's definitely a destination location. Now, normally we show you our everyday lives where we're boondocking. This has truly felt like a vacation for us. Yeah. And we have just had the best time. So, well, we hope that, um, you guys enjoyed it too. Yep. We will see you next week. If you would like to support our channel, please consider becoming a patron. We also have stickers available in our website store. Thank you for watching.